जासोस की हालत को जासोस ही समझेगा मैं क्षमा से कहता हूँ परवाने से नहीं कहता ओनली अ फेलो सफर ओनली समवान हु नोज वॉट इट इज़ लाइक टू बर्न इन योर ओन पैशन टू स्लोली कंज्यूम योर सेल्फ इन योर ओन फायर विल अंडरस्टैंड हाउ आई फील एंड सो आई एड्रेस माई सेल्फ टू द फ्लेम नॉट टू द मॉथ वट इज द मॉथ नो ऑफ पैशन and so this story goes out to all you burning flames out there you who understand what it is to be the fire now today's is the strangest story that i have ever heard it was of a love affair between the scholar pandit pushpa dhavan radhikanta stayed middle aged a translator of ancient sanskrit texts and nandini a beautiful courtesan with a very dark secret now my story begins in 1555 the mughal emperor humayun had just managed to regain his throne after 15 years of being in exile and his first action as emperor was to replenish his library his beautiful library that had been sacked and destroyed by the invaders many many scholars were brought in for the task and amongst them was one Pandit Pushpadhavan Ratikanta whose duty it was to provide a full and true translation of the Kam Shastras the treaties of love from Sanskrit into Persian and not just translate it was also his job to instruct the noblemen of the court on how to put the teachings of pleasure into practice because as the texts say he who understands how to successfully strategize in the field of love will be equally successful in the field of battle and so amongst the scholars pandit pushpadhavan ratikanta held pride of place he was quite an important man at the court of humayun and then there was nandini nandini was a royal courtesan not only was nandini very beautiful she had also been trained in all the 64 arts of giving pleasure as prescribed by the kama sutra there was nothing that she could not do and she had been bought for the royal harem by no other than kafur khan himself and kafur khan was the eunuch who was in charge of the royal harem he was humayun's most trusted confidant and some say he was even more powerful than the emperor himself and He had bought Nandini because he had very special plans for her. You see, the Mughal court was a dangerous place. Murder was not just common; it was the answer to well, everything. If you wanted your father's job, you had to kill him for it. You wanted your brother's position, you killed him for it. You wanted somebody's money or property or wife, you killed them for it. But unfortunately. Murder was becoming a little bit more tricky as well because people were now learning how to protect themselves a little bit better. Servants were being hired to taste the food in case of uh, poison. There were bodyguards in case of surprise attacks. There were spies in case of conspiracies. Nothing was certain anymore. And so, Kafur Khan had decided to develop his own secret weapon, Nandini. Kafur owned a collection of some of the deadliest poisons. The plan was to gradually feed this poison to Nandini till she too became as deadly as the poison itself. He had started by feeding her just the tiniest of tiny little drops. It had made her wretch and vomit and she thought she was going to die, but soon she got used to it and he could then give her two drops. Then a whole spoonful then two spoonfuls and so on till finally she was able to drink a whole vial of the poison without it affecting her in the least and gradually the poison had so fully settled into her system that she had very soon become the poison herself all her bodily fluids her saliva her sweat even her tears were lethal to make love to her was to die and finally Kafur had a weapon against which no one could protect themselves. But back to Pandit Pushpadhavan Ratikanta. Now, like everyone else at court, 
Pandit Pushpadhavan had always been dazzled by Nandini, but he had never dared to get close to her, not even to talk to her, because royal courtesans were out of bounds. Their attentions were reserved for men of a very different rank. Scholars, no matter how important they were, did not quite make it to that level. And so, imagine Pushpadhavan's surprise when one day, Nandini turns up at his house looking for him. And not only does she come looking for him, she knows his name, she knows where he lives, and she knows what all he has translated. To say that he was surprised is an understatement. But she had come looking for him because she wanted something. She wanted him to teach her Sanskrit. And why? Sanskrit was the language of the Kama Sutra. Nandini was the Kama Sutra incarnate. There was nothing that Vatsyayan had written in that great book of love and lovers and love making that she had not mastered. There was nothing she could not do. There were, there were no instructions that she could not follow. There was no position that was beyond her capabilities. The only thing missing, she could not speak Sanskrit. The very language in which had been written the arts of loving. She could speak in the most refined Hindi and recite poetry in the most fluent Persian, but could she whisper the ancient and mysterious words of love in the language of love? No, she could not. She felt incomplete and only he could help. And so, through this very strange request, Pandit Pushpadhavan Ratikanta becomes Nandini's tutor. A deliriously happy Pushpadhavan Ratikanta, I might add. It's like the gods have answered all his prayers. He finally gets to be with her. And he puts his heart and soul into teaching her how the art of love takes place in the ancient and mysterious language of love. They say that to sing love songs about love is to make love. And our elderly scholar made love to Nandini with every word, every phrase, every syllable in the Sanskrit language. And let me tell you, if you haven't read the Kama Sutra in Sanskrit, you have not made love. For instance, in the Kama Sutra, there is a wonderful passage which translated says, if she is sneaking out of her house to come to you under cover of a veil, to spend an evening of love making with you, and she gets caught in the rain and her clothes get wet, then now is not the time for sex. Give her some dry clothes, beautiful silks and muslins that you have kept especially for her. Give her comfort, keep her warm. It's a good thought, but in Sanskrit, Pushpadhavan recited, I lift your veil. Because the rain has soaked through your cloak, I help you out of your clothes. I dry you and I dust you with powdered marigold petals and lotus pollen. And then I dress you in the delicate muslins that I keep just for you. And so that I can resist the temptation to touch you, I turn away. I turn away and I hang up your wet clothes to dry. I turn away and I light the oil lamps. I turn away and do anything as I strain to keep my eyes away from you until I can hold back no longer. And then I turn to look at you and the beauty that is you makes me Another lesson translated. An evening of love making must be lighthearted and enjoyable and entertaining. Keep some chalks in your drawing room, make a portrait of her, give her compliments, do magic tricks, entertain her. It's good advice. But in Sanskrit, once again, it was a melody. As Pushpadhavan recited, I pick up my chalks to make a portrait of you as you stand there, hand on hip, looking at me over your shoulder your eyes innocently wicked as you run a lotus flower down the majesty of your neck to the swell of your pearl adorned breast and then you stop and arch your brow the curve of your brow makes me shudder shudder with fear and desire in delicate balance the sight of you fills my consciousness 
your belly dusted with fragrant powders, your thighs glistening with luscious oils, lips glossed with red, eyelids heavy with gold, your neck perfumed, you are like an orchestra playing extravagantly beautiful music. I dream that I could drink ambrosia from your lotus bud mouth. I could lick sweetness from your chocolate-kissed breasts. I could suck nectar from your navel. But no more. I want to leave the rest to the magnificence of the imagination and to the imaginings that imagination might imagine. Because love is just a trick of the mind and there is such pleasure in imagining and being enchanted. Lesson three, the Kama Sutra says that women are aroused by a man's restraint. A girl will love a man who does not make love to her too soon, but only on the condition that she is aware of his intense desire to do so. In Sanskrit, Pushpadhavan sang, we drink together and play a game of dice. We are so eager to make love and yet we do not. We postpone it and we postpone it so that the pleasure will not be over but remain permanently imminent. You throw the dice and you win. You ask for my shirt. You throw again and you win again. And this time you ask for my bracelet. Then you win my sitar, my garland, my paint brushes, my crayons, my book, my mirror, my everything. And finally, when there is nothing more to lose, you ask for my breath, my soul, my shadow, my reflection even. And then, and only then, you put your bracelet on me and you claim it. After we make love, I lie next to you and I watch you dream. And I watch you dream till I can no longer bear not talking to you. And so, I wake you with kisses on your love-warmed neck. And then I dress you. I dress you again, so I may undress you again. Do you know what we have missed out by not being able to read the Kama Sutra in Sanskrit? As I said, with every last word, every last phrase in the Sanskrit language, Pandit Pushpadhavan Ratikanta made love to Nandini till she too fell completely and hopelessly in love with him. He had always been dazzled by her, right from the beginning. But she fell in love with him very gradually, bit by bit, in the same way as she had acquired her immunity to poison. Now, after months of teaching her, Pandit Pushpadhavan Ratikanta could no longer contain himself. He, he finally had to tell her that he loved her crazily and overwhelmingly. Nandini had turned away, the tears in her eyes. She had told him that she loved him too with all of her heart, but they could not be lovers. And then she had told him why. She had told him that she was made of poison, that to be kissed by her would be the same as being bitten by the deadliest of snakes. And then, as her voice broke into a sobbing little whisper, she said, I am not love, I am death. You can probably guess what happens next. Pushpadhavan, insisting that he's not afraid of death. I mean, if he can die in her arms, then what a way to go. Insisting that in his love for her, he's no longer afraid of death. Pushpadhavan forces himself on her as she struggles to fight him off. And she fights him off, not to save herself, but to save him. Pushing him back while at the same time crying out that she loves him and she desperately wants him. Now, in every version of the story, Pushpadhavan Radhikanta made love to Nandini only once. He died. But I'm not interested in him. He is merely the moth. I want to know what happened to the flame. What happened to Nandini? Did she ever get over him? Did she find someone else? Or did she just end up consuming herself in her own fire? Because when you are the flame, there is only one way to put the fire out.
Watch out, all you burning flames out there.